Hello, this video is on applying properties of rational exponents. We have already learned properties of exponents, and now we're going to just apply those properties that we already know to the rational exponents that we learned about yesterday. So as a review, you know that if I had a to the nth power and I multiplied it by a, the same base, to a different power, then if the bases are the same, then we just add our exponents like that, a to the m plus n. We know if we have a power, a to the m, and then we raise it all to another power, n, that's when you have a power to a power and you multiply, m times n. That's a times, not a minus. We know that um, if we have a times b in parentheses all raised to the m, then we can apply the exponent to both, a to the m, b to the m. Um, if we had a negative exponent, we all know that that does not mean that the answer is negative. It means that it's the reciprocal of a to the positive m. We know that if we had a to the m divided by a to the n, as long as the bases are the same, we subtract our exponents, m minus n. Um, if we had a fraction, a over b, all in parentheses, to a power, then we can apply that power to both parts, numerator and denominator, like that. If we were to take the nth root of two numbers multiplied together, you can split it up into the nth root of a times the nth root of b, like that. Um, and if I were to take the nth root of a fraction, then I can split that up as well, the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b. So these are the properties that we're going to use today. Okay, so let's work some examples. We'll start with 2 to the 1 half power times 2 to the 3 halves power. We have like bases, which means we can add our exponents. So we've got 2 to the 1 half plus 3 halves. And that means you have to be able to add fractions and know that 1 half plus 3 halves equals 4 halves. And 2 to the 4 halves, if we reduce that, is 2 squared. And 2 squared is 4. So without your calculator, you now know that 2 to the 1 half power times 2 to the 3 halves power equals 4. Next up, we have 2 to the x times 2 to the 3rd equals 2 to the 5th. So this is actually an equation where we're solving for x. Um, we have like bases, so we know that this is 2 to the x plus 3, because we add our exponents. So 2 to the x plus 3 equals 2 to the 5th. Since these guys are the same, and there's an equal sign here, these have to be the same. So you can drop those 2's and say x plus 3 equals 5, which then tells you that x equals 2. Like that. Next one, 3 to the 1 half power in parentheses, all raised to the 6th. This is a power to the power, so we're going to multiply 3 to the 1 half times 6. Half of 6 is 3, so 3 to the 3rd. And because we've memorized all of our powers, we know that 3 to the 3rd is 27. Okay, next one, 4x all in parentheses raised to the negative 1 half power. So we know that because it's in parentheses that the negative one-half power applies to both the 4 and the x. We know that the negative in the exponent means the reciprocal of 4x to the one-half power. And we know that one-half power is the same thing as square root. So I'm going to say 1 over 4 to the one-half, x to the one-half. And 4 to the one-half, that's saying the square root of 4, that would be 2. So this equals 1 over 2x to the 1 half. And be careful um, because I want you to take note. If the problem is given in rational exponent, then the answer needs to be given as a rational exponent. If the problem is given as a radical, then the answer can be given as a radical. But don't go back and forth. Keep it as, um, as it is given to you. All right, next up, 3 to the 1 fifth divided by 3 to the 6 fifths. So because the bases are the same, we can take our base and subtract our exponents. 1 fifth minus 6 fifths. And 1 fifth minus 6 fifths is going to be negative 5 fifths. 
which is the same thing as negative 1, and 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. Next example, 27 over 8 in parentheses raised to the 1 third power. So you could do 27 divided by 8, get a weird decimal, and then raise it to the 1 third power, try to take the cube root of that. Um, you could do it, but that doesn't sound like fun to me. I'm going to split it up into 27 to the 1 third over 8 to the 1 third because those are both perfect cubes. That's saying the cubed root of 27 and the cubed root of 27 is 3 and then the cubed root of 8 and the cubed root of 8 is 2. Alright, here we have the square root of x squared. So you guys are going, alright, it's x. But here's the thing. The square root of negative x squared in parentheses like that, that would also be x. Because these would cancel out, but any time you square something, it becomes positive, right? So, really, when you have the square root of x squared, it's going to have to be the absolute value of x. Think about that. If x was negative 2, and I plugged it in, the square root of negative 2 squared, that's saying the square root of positive 4, and that's 2. So it has to be the absolute value. 2 is the absolute value of negative 2, like that. So absolute value of x. Tricky, I know. But don't just say, oh, okay, so then when I have the cubed root of x cubed, that's the absolute value of x too, but because it's not. With, it's a, with a cubed root or any other odd root, um, if I took the cubed root of negative x, then I would actually get negative x. And the cubed root of positive x cubed would give me positive x. So this one's not absolute value. That one actually does equal just x. So then, if I have the fourth root of x to the fourth, well, that's an even root. And so we know that that negative x to the fourth power and then the fourth root of that would give me a positive x as well as with the positive. So that one is absolute value of x. Anytime it's even, it's absolute value. So now let's do the fifth root of 32, x to the fifth. The fifth root of 32, because you've memorized your powers, can be separated out, and that is 2. And then we do times the fifth root of x to the fifth. That's an odd, so we don't have to worry about the absolute value. That's just 2x, like that. I know there's a lot of examples, but they're all very quick examples. Here we have the square root of 32 times the square root of 1 half. So some people might be inclined to simplify the square root of 32 and then simplify the square root of 1 half and rationalize the denominator and do all that boring stuff and then put them together. But that's a lot more work than is necessary. If you know your properties, you know that we can just say that's the same thing as the square root of 32 times a half. And 32 times a half is 16. And 16 is a perfect square. So it's a lot easier in this case if you put them together. Okay, here we have the 6th root of 192 over the 6th root of 3. Well, once again, the 6th root of 192, that's not a pretty 6th root. Um, same thing with the 6th root of 3. But you can try putting them together, making this the 6th root of 192 divided by 3. Because 192 is divisible by 3, that's the 6th root of 64. And we do have our powers memorized, so we know that the 6th root of 64 is 2. And here's your joke. I stuck it in the middle of all the examples just to see if you're paying attention. Um, but here's, you know, some powers that I found. It's kind of funny. All right, moving on. Cubed root of 432. So is the cubed root of 432, is, is 432 a perfect cube? No, it's not. So this is one where we're going to have to simplify it by thinking, what perfect cube does go into 432? And 216, that's a perfect cube that will go into 432. Um, so that's the same thing as saying the cube root of 216 times 2. So you want to think what perfect cubes, in this case cubes, go into that number. So that means that you have to have your cubes memorized. And then we're taking the cube root of 216 times the cubed root of 2, 
And we know that the cubed root of 216 is 6, so it's 6 cubed roots of 2. And I keep saying you have these memorized. If I'm, I'm saying that and I'm lying because you don't, well, then um, you need to hurry up and memorize them, don't you? Okay. Okay, next. 3 times the fourth root of 405. 405 is not a perfect fourth root. So think hard what perfect fourth root um, will go into 405. And if you think hard enough, you'll come up with 81 goes into 405 five times. So that's saying 3 times the fourth root of 81 times the fourth root of 5. And the fourth root of 81 is 3. So this is 3 times 3 times the fourth root of 5. And 3 times 3 is 9. So this is 9 fourth roots of 5. All right, these are getting ugly. I have the cubed root of 7x squared y times the cubed root of 147x to the negative 1 power y to the third. So as you can tell from what we've been doing, we don't want to take the cubed roots of these separately. We want to put it all together. So we're going to take the cubed root of 7 times 147, which is 1029, x squared times x to the negative first power. Remember, you add your exponents. So that's x to the 2 plus negative 1, which is x to the 1 power. So we just have an x. And then we have y times y cubed is y to the 4th. So we're taking the cubed root of 1,029xy to the 4th. All right, and then you think what perfect cube goes into 1,029. And 343 is a perfect cube that will go into 1,029. So that's 343 times 3. And then we have times x. And then what perfect cube goes into y to the fourth? That's y cubed times y. So I broke it down so that I could see my perfect cubes here and here. And we know that the cubed root of 343 is 7. And we know the cubed root of y cubed is y, so I'm going to take 7 and y and bring them to the outside. And then I have cube root, and then the 3, the x, and the y have to stay. And there's my final answer like that. Okay, look at this one. I've got the cubed root of 5 plus 2 cubed roots of 5. Um, this is an addition problem, and the only way to add radicals is when they are the same. So that's like saying... A chicken plus two chickens. If I have one chicken plus two chickens, I have three chickens. So three cubed roots of five. Just treat the cubed root of five as its own entity. And if I have one of them plus two of them, I now have three of them. So if I've got three cubed roots of five plus five cubed roots of three, now these are not the same. And if they're not the same, we can't add them. It's like saying 3x plus 5y. They're different. We can't put them together. So this is simplified. And there's nothing we could do to it to make them the same either. So if we look at this one now, we've got 3 times 6 to the 1 3rd power minus 6 to the 1 3rd power. This 6 to the 1 3rd power, treat that as an entity. If I have Three dogs minus one dog. Three minus one is two. So I've got two, six to the one-third powers. And you just leave it like that. And so here I saved the hardest one for last. Because if you first look at this and you say the fourth root of 512 minus two times the fourth root of two, you'd say those are not like radicals. Um, so we can't subtract them. But you could actually make like radicals out of this one because the fourth root of 512 breaks down. So if it can break down, you should break it down to C. Um, you'd say, what perfect fourth power goes into 512? And the answer is 256. That's 256 times 2. And then we'll keep this over here, minus 2 fourth roots of 2. The fourth root of 256 is 4. And then we have the fourth root of 2 minus two fourth roots of two. So now we do have like radicals. We have four bananas minus two bananas gives us four minus two is two fourth roots of twos, or 
like that. And that's the last one. So you guys can put your pencils down, take a deep breath, go to bed, have a good night, and I'll see you tomorrow.